Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. Hope you enjoyed your, our field trip. I know I did. Those needles are really magical. Oh my god, that's so cool. Oh, I need a clicker. So I'm here to talk to you today about how UX research can be used to give everyone a voice. So as developers, we want to know how to include everyone, make sure that what we're making is serving the people that we're trying to serve, and that we're designing for the people that we envision. So raise your hand if you've ever given feedback. So this can mean, a lot of you, a few hands, this can mean Yelp, this can mean a suggestion box, this can mean that you told someone that their app could improve, anything like that. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up if you think that your feedback helped. You brave souls. We don't really know sometimes, right, how our feedback is being received. So we take time out of our day and we want to make a change. Uh, we want to help make things better, perhaps. Uh, maybe these are the reasons that we leave feedback. We want to fix a problem, right? So the developer, how many of us are developers? Including those who want to be a developer. That's you too. Awesome. So many developers start out making an app with an idea for a problem that they're trying to solve. They're an expert in this issue. They know the people who are having this issue and the type of people who will use their app and in what kind of setting. They use their technical skills and are inspired to make a big change, right? So the UX researcher, they don't usually dress this way. Let me explain the symbolism. She has a lab coat because UX researchers like to work in a lab. They may have a studio where they conduct a lot of their testing, but they may also go to wherever the app might be used. So for example, if most of the customers or most of the users are going to be using the app on transit or in the airport or perhaps at work, that's where UX researchers will go to conduct a test. They like to use the environment that the user will typically be in when using an app or a service. So they aim to make the app accessible. They spend time getting to know their users and they report back to the, to the development team on what they found. So that app, when it goes out into people's real lives, how is it being used? How is it being received? And they don't really use magnifying glass either. But the reason I included that is because they're kind of like a detective. So they go out and get to know the people in the real world who will be using the app in real life situations. So I get asked this a lot. Uh, are you a UI designer? And a UI designer is very, um, is concerned with how things look, more like a front-end developer, perhaps. Um, UX definitely has to do with UI. A UI can very much influence the user experience, but UX goes beyond just the UI. It goes to how does the app work in general, how is it being received, and what kind of strategies and design decisions can be made to reach the audience that we're trying to reach. So it goes a little bit beyond uh, UI. Also, as opposed to QA, uh, this kind of testing, usability testing, goes beyond just finding bugs or glitches. Um, so maybe an app technically works, uh, maybe a link technically works, but if it's hard to find that link, this might be a UX issue. Uh, is it delightful to use? Is it fun if it's a game? Um, does it increase productivity? Does it bring people together if it's a social app? So what is the general user experience that people undergo when using this app. That's the kind of testing that UX testing is, is about. What kinds of things can benefit from UX research? This is a short list. We have software, hardware, uh, and other kinds of systems where people work together in companies, in communities, and so on. A lot of other things, too. All right, so many of us are making apps and websites right now. So how does UX fit in with the development pipeline? So this is one of my favorite quotes from Donald A. Norman, who's the, the author of the book, The Design of Everyday Things, and also the co-founder of the Nielsen Norman Group, which I love. I'll show you their website at the end. 
Uh, so they're a leading UX design firm. And good design is actually a lot harder to notice because it just works. Uh, this means that it can seem invisible. We take for granted when things just work really well. For example, in his book, he looks at some things like, simple things like doors. What do doors do? They open, they close. A few pretty simple tasks, right? Although sometimes we take for granted how a door's design tells us how to use it. If we're used to seeing the door, it's familiar to us, this could be a reason that we're pretty sure we know how it works. So by studying a user flow, we can map what people are doing when they're using an app or even something like a door. They can try pushing it, try pulling it, they can sigh loudly, shake their fist at the door when it won't open, things like that. And we take note of how the door is being used and what the experience is like. Same thing with websites and apps. We can map how users are using an app or a website, trying to complete a simple task, and whether or not they have difficulty with this task. What kinds of things do user re UX researchers look for? Um, time spent in completing a task. If it's easy to do, it's probably pretty fast, right? How many clicks does it take? Um, when they're trying to accomplish something, what do they try to do first? This knee-jerk reaction is really interesting because it tells us how the user thinks that they should go about doing something. Uh, basically, why do they use the app the way that they do? And also, they can, they can redesign the app, make a new prototype, and test that prototype to see how it has improved. So here's our development pipeline from start to finish. Start is up there. And in the beginning ideation phase, um, we're thinking about how to make our app, but rarely do we think about testing it that soon. When we incorporate feedback early, earlier on in the design process, we can make decisions about how we're going to uh, make the app. We can make decisions about the vision of the app and where it's going much earlier on. We can also redesign a prototype, and I have this little dotted arrow, because then we can always test it again. When we make a new prototype that's improved, we can test it again, find out how it's improved, and if it's going to make the mark. Later, we go on to building it and distributing it to the rest of the world. OK, so how does UX help corporate environments and communities? When working with groups of people and being a community organizer, for example, how does UX research help? So Donald Norman thinks of good design as being like communication. It's a conversation between two people that just keeps going. And when an app magically knows how to accomplish something, when someone can use the app in a really fluid and intuitive way, and it becomes a tool that integrates into their life, it's like magic. How do they do that? UX research went into developing this app early on. It's like the app magically knows what the user is thinking. So for employees, this can mean better work fulfillment and employee satisfaction. It also means increased productivity. So when users know uh, in their job what they're capable of contributing, if they feel that they're contributing to the whole, this really impacts a sense of fulfillment and retention of employees. Um, a return on investment in development time for managers Managers make decisions about what kinds of systems, what kinds of programs can be implemented into a corporate culture, and they can find out if what they're designing is really helping through UX research. So it generally means good communication between employees and leaders. This leads to a feeling of being empowered and included. So providing internal support to employees is another great thing for UX to focus on. Making sure that employer, employees have what they need to do their job and to feel great doing it. 
onboarding and training new employees. When you're new at a job and you're not sure what to do, making sure that there's a system to give new employees everything that they need to get started is also something that can be improved with UX research. Meeting rooms and scheduling, all the logistics of where to have a conference, where to have an ad hoc meeting, um, making sure that you can book a conference and then, uh, and then show up. These are all parts of a, a system in which uh, workplace UX comes into play. So for communities, it means open contribution. If people are aware of how they can contribute to a community, it in turn makes them feel more engaged. They're, they have control over how they can contribute. They know what that flow is like. They receive support in contributing. And that flow allows contributions to come in and people to engage. This allows the, the community to grow. Right? If it's simple and easy to contribute, that is kind of the fuel that oils the machine with, commu with communities. They have a higher incentive and they feel motivated to contribute. And this mean also means a sense of inclusion. So I founded a community called Bay Area Women in Games in 2015. And we had a few different kinds of things that we may need to do in this community. So knowing how to contribute to the community, how to be involved in planning events, for example, who to contact about different parts of that pipeline, knowing where to voice ideas. Maybe you have an idea for a game, maybe you have an idea for an activity that the community can be involved in. Who do you contact about these ideas? Many of our members found a mentor or a creative partner, someone with whom they can team up and make a game together. And knowing how to do that and where to post a message is important in keeping the community running. There's a group on Facebook, but making sure that we, we stay active and we keep people engaged. Um, this had to do with um, my UX work because understanding how people feel about the uh, community, if they feel engaged, um, listening to their feedback, and incorporating improvements to make sure that people feel included. So understanding our users means having empathy, knowing how people feel, listening to their feedback, and being able to see what we've created through their eyes. So I have a, a vision for something that I've created, and I hope that that thing, whether it's an app, community, comes across the way that I'm hoping that it does. And to receive feedback means to understand how I'm doing and how I can improve. So this is, like, this is the, the cycle of UX research. And if you'd like to know more about UX, here are some sh short links. This will keep you busy for a while, especially an end group and uxmastery.com. And that's it, thank you.